Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's Thursday, July 3rd. And in America, they call it uh, July 4th Independence Day. But again, as our Trends Journal cover shows, Independence Day, pay your taxes, do what you're told. Yeah, this country's declined so much in front of our eyes, it's just disgusting. A bunch of little freaks, pay your taxes. <laughs> taxes, taxes, taxes. This, is, this stuff barely existed when this country was founded. And now they keep robbing us of our money and using it to slaughter innocent people all over the world and give to their buddies. Ah, disgusting. And it's a freak show. Anyway, on to the markets. S&P, NASDAQ, boop, new highs. You know, RFK Jr. did an interview, and I'm, I don't support him. I support a lot of what he supports, but as the man who launched Occupy Peace, and he is so pro-Israeli genocide, I'll have nothing to do with him. He did this interview, <laughs> and he said, it was on Breakfast Radio, there's three giant corporations, BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard, which own collectively own each other, which collectively own each other. So it's really one giant corporation, but they own 89% of the S and P they own everything. And they've now decided to buy every single family home in America. It goes on. So according to business insider, and this was on Yahoo finance, the, um, they did research an academic paper in 2017 titled, this is 2017, this, it's even gotten worse since then. This is 2024, Hidden Power of the Big Three. The researchers state that BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard are the largest shareholders with 88% of the S&P firms and morons and fucking imbeciles Call this an equity market, a stock market, America, oh, the land of opportunity. Who the fuck are you kidding? Three companies. And as he said, Kennedy, it's really one big company, own 88%. That's right. Of the S&P. In conclusion, the research is right that since 2008, there have been substantial shift from active to passive investment strategies. BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street now dominate this passive investing market. Together, they are the largest shareholders of 40% of all U.S. companies. Yep. And de facto permanent governing boards over 40% of all listed U.S. corporations. The crime syndicates running America. Yep. And as I'm buying up houses, Redfin said in 2023 that investors bought up 26% of affordable homes. That began, by the way, back in the panic of 08 when there was the subprime mortgage crisis. The banks, the bandits, who got $29 trillion bailout, according to Bard College, Levy Institute of Bard College. Hey, you don't have a job? You're deep in debt? Don't worry about it. Sign over here. You got a subprime mortgage. So all these foreclosures that happened, the banksters, Blackstone, one after another, started buying them up. And that's what the country's become. As I said, when I was a young man, there were grocery stores, hardware stores, Stationary stores, drug stores. Now they're all chains. You like Staples? No, I like Lowe's. Well, Home Depot is much better. I think there were hardware stores everywhere. Everywhere. Gone. Gone. Very few. They've taken off everything. Kroger. No more grocery stores. It's a crime syndicate running America, and the people are going broke. And... This is from Fox. 
housing prices are growing more unaffordable in the U.S. That's according to a new report published by real estate data provider ATOM, A-T-T-O-M, which examined 572 U.S. counties and determined the median priced homes is about 80% of those area in of those in those areas, eighty percent of the homes in those areas are at are at a reach for the average income earner. And the average income earner is seventy one thousand two hundred fourteen dollars. And you can't oh, there's no inflation. When I was a young guy and I got into the corporate world, I was making a lot of money, like at thirty two thousand dollars back in the seventies. That was a lot of money. And now, 71000 you can't afford anything. Yep. The um, portion of average wages nationwide required for major home ownership expenses is up to 35.1%. Back in 2007, it was 28%. In fact, major home ownership expense on a typical home sold during the second quarter required an annual income, you ready? Almost $91,000 order to be considered affordable. And that's 25% higher than the average national income. But hey, don't worry about it. We got BlackRock. We got State Street. We got Vanguard. And they run America. Bloomberg, nearly one quarter of all office space will be vacant by 2026. Huh, no kidding. What's one of our top trends? Office building bust? Banks go bust? Hardly talking about it because here's an article in today's Wall Street Journal. Private real estate funds face a jump in withdrawals. Starwood Capital Group's move to severely tighten restrictions on investors withdrawals from its $10 billion real estate fund is rippling through the $90 billion private real estate fund business. Goes on. Why is it rippling? Here's why it's rippling. Ready? Down here. The shrinking fund business is one of the most dramatic signs of commercial property downturn caused by the jump in interest rates and flagging demand in the office sector. Investors who enjoyed outsized returns when real estate boomed have lost money in recent months as property values have fallen. How's that for mainstream media fucking... Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Total fucking horseshit. The language that they use. A downturn caused by a jump in interest rates? A fuckface... The downturn was caused by scumbag politicians who locked down the country and forced people to work at home. You got it? And, according to that Bloomberg article, a full 85% of North American organizations polled by brokerage Jones Lang LaSalle, Inc. have implemented hybrid work And occupancies across U.S. uh, cities is stuck at about 50% of pre-pandemic. It's not pre-pandemic. It's pre-COVID war brought to you by scumbag politicians. Again, they called it a pandemic on March 11th, 2020, when the grand total of 4,219 people died out of 8 billion. Yep. Yep. And occupancy across main, yep. And, oh, and how about, we won't talk about this. How about all the businesses that used to depend on commuters that have gone out of business? Yeah, but they're only small business. The hairstylists, the shoe guys, you know, the, the uh, you know, restaurants that used to have happy hours and all. They, 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 don't, they don't count. They don't count. Hey, how's BlackRock doing, huh? Then they go on 
This is why you subscribe to the Trends Journal. And to subscribe to the Trends Journal, they go into trendsjournal.com. Trendsjournal.com. We're giving you what nobody else in the world is giving you. We're giving you facts, not frauds like these people. And this is what they're blaming it on. Some financial advisors question whether individual investors' appetite for the funds will return, even when the commercial real estate industry rebounds. It ain't going to rebound. It ain't going to rebound. People aren't going back to work. Your office vacancy rate is going to be near 20%. And again, 85% of North American organizations have implemented hybrid work. And again, all the businesses that depended on the business. There's going to be a banking crisis, the likes of which we've never seen, and no one's talking about it. No one other than the Trends Journal. The banks are going to go bust. And Powell on the rate cut crap. Oh, by the way, we're getting shadow banned. We're seeing one comment after another about um, people not being notified that we're doing you know, or we're doing a podcast. We're doing it today because tomorrow's the 4th of July and I'm taking off for the weekend. And um, so subscribe, hit that subscribe button and spread the word. So Powell puts rate cuts back into view. Uh, yeah, it, again, up and down. It looks like they're going to lower them in September. And gold prices today, they closed at around $3,355. So uh, looks to, again, they haven't even lowered interest rates yet, and gold prices are still high. Again, over up over $300 since our top trend forecast this year, a golden year for gold. China plans to kickstart its economy as a misfire. Yeah, no kidding. Again, China, the economy was booming. They launched the COVID war, three years of zero COVID policy. They destroyed the lives and livelihoods of hundreds of millions of its people. It ain't bouncing back. It's not going to bounce back. It's going to be a long time. coming. It was overbuilt as all booms are. When they got into the World Trade Organization, poof, the GDP skyrocketed. And, it, and they, they overbuilt the place. By some estimates, 30% of China's gross domestic product is real estate driven. Then the real estate's in the toilet. And what else? So yeah, this is the Wall Street Journal. Big thing, this guy. Stand with Evan. Look at that. They didn't stand with uh, Assange. Okay, on to the Biden thing. It's up and down now. President Joe Biden has told a key ally, a key ally. What the fuck is a key ally? That his re-election campaign against former President Donald Trump may not be recoverable if he cannot quell concerns about his fitness for office. The guy's out of your fucking mind in front of everybody's eyes. Has been for a long time. And this is a shithead. That's the president that the Supreme Court, there he goes. This is one of our Trends Journal covers two weeks before the, 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 the debate, the fall of America. And now it's like big fucking news. And this is the, the cover, be, again, two days before the debate. Presidential reality show, the great debate, Daffy Duck versus Goofy. That's all, folks. Everybody saw it before their eyes. These are the top two people running America. And now the Supreme Court, Supreme bunch of shits, came out with that new law that a president could kill, murder, steal, rob, do whatever the hell he wants or she wants, and they're okay. They could do it. Hey, it's the new America, the kingdom, his majesty. Roll out that red carpet. Disgusting what's happened to this country. An unnamed ally said Biden is still invested in a re-election fight, but he is aware he knows he has two more events like this. We're in different places. Yeah, reckoning on Biden... Age has come. Yeah, what fucking took so long? What fucking took so long? It was in front of everybody's eyes. Oh, I'm so concerned about uh, uh, the guy Justin Timberlake got DWI, you know. Again, what took so long to see this? And now the big news is that 
Harris is likeliest to top ticket if Biden pulls out a poll. He's going to pull out. I believe he is. And I'm still saying got and Gavin Newsom is going to be the guy because Harris got no following. And she's about as dumb as he is. On to the Israel war. Gaza militants are re- arming and regrouping. Yeah, the militants. Yeah, they were militants what they did. But now how about the militants that are destroying them, killing a lot of, now it's over about 40,000 Palestinians, innocent people, 70% women and children, destroying the whole place, but they're militants. Israel, no, oh, no. Council on American Islamic Relations Care said that, um, and the, they report that the Air Israeli group Peace Now said that Israeli authorities recently approved the appropriation of five square miles of Palestinian land in the Jordan Valley. And this is the biggest take since the 1993 Oslo Accords. I'm tired of hearing this bullshit that God gave you the land. What if you don't believe in God? A lot of people don't. And what if you don't believe in the God you believe in? Not telling you to believe in the God I believe in. Don't tell me to. It's stealing land in violation of the Geneva Convention and Article 242 of the United Nations. But they keep doing it. And the war is going to keep ramping up. Hezbollah launches barrage of rockets at Israel after top commander killed. Hezbollah says a top command had been killed in an Israeli attack in southern Lebanon. And they're going to keep ramping it up. Ramping it up, ramping it up, ramping it up. And Iran said, it's in your Trends Journal, if Israel attacks Lebanon heavily, they're going to wipe out Israel. Because they're going to become involved in it. World War III, and that's why you have to come to our rally on September 28th. Peace and Freedom Rally. Four Corners of Freedom, Crown and John Street. Go to OccupyPeace.com, OccupyPeace.com. The speakers are going to be Scott Ritter, Judge Andrew Napolitano, Max Blumenthal, Anya Parampil, and others. And we're going to have music, entertainment. We have to unite for peace. We need a million people to get here. We got to make the news because they're going to destroy us. That little clown over there in Germany, Olaf Scholz today, said that, in my view, a ceasefire that involves Ukraine capitulation is one that we, as Germany, must never support. You're going to they're gonna have to capitulate, fuckface. They're losing. Russia got over 20, some 20% of the land that they didn't have before. They're going to have to capitulate. Nope. Because NATO, to establish new posts, in Kiev to bolster support and Germany and Poland joined forces to fend off Russia. Ramping up World War II. Hey, oh yeah, Germany and, and Poland, yeah, joined forces. Germany was great to Poland during World War II. Only slaughtered how many people? No, they're your allies. World War III's begun. If we don't stop it, it's finished. We got maniacs in charge. They're only interested in themselves. Check out the interview I did with Judge Napolitano today as well. And go to Judging Freedom. He's really making it happen. Great guests. And we're giving you everything we can. Subscribe to the Trends Journal. The more subscribers we have, the more we could do. Not in terms of giving you what we're giving you. We're giving you the best we can. But in terms of we get the word out there of truth justice and the American way and the way of the world, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We give you facts, figures, trend forecasts, trends analysis that you don't get in anywhere else in the world. So thanks for tuning in.